Today, we're gonna watch the Punisher do what he does best. Send bad guys to the ER. Injuries featured in today's video range from small boo-boos to teetering on the brink of death. And without an emergency response team nearby to attend to the grievously wounded, things aren't looking good. So, in the name of modern medicine, let's see what Professor Frank Castle can teach us about the human body. It's time to start talking. I'm not the one who's going to be talking. Neither Frank nor his first opponent strike me as the talking type. So I'll provide the theory and anatomy to keep up with Frank's hands-on teaching style. With a quick exchange of pleasantries, class is officially in session. Divide. You ready? Our first patient goes high while the Punisher goes low and aims a punch straight at the patellofemoral joint or the kneecap. This is an interesting place to strike as this move does hold some risk. The bones in your leg and knee are generally bigger and stronger than those in the fist and as such this is a risk of the bones in the hand breaking if bone strikes bone. But upon closer inspection, it looks like Frank's right hook makes contact with the interior of the knee around his opponent's VMO, or vastus medialis obliques, and MCL ligament. A blow to these structures will not drive the knee into hyperextension, but will exploit the tendons that support its largely uniplanar hinge anatomy. Because the knee bends primarily in only one plane of movement. Bend the knee. Bend the knee. When you bend the knee, you're here to bend the knee. At the moment that the Punisher connects, the attacker is in the process of shifting his weight forward onto his lead leg. And the blow to the back knee causes a slight buckling response. Just disorienting enough. <laughs> That's one way to seize an opportunity. Frank grabs the attacker by the mandible and sends his jaw slamming into the astro turf, but still very hard gym floor. Each summer it grows, it has a rebirth. It's green and it's natural and it comes from the earth. By now you know what I speak of is grass, the ideal surface for getting knocked on your ass. With enough force, Frank could cause a dislocation at the TMJ joint or the temple mandibular joint, but I'd be more worried about the blunt force trauma to the head. This could easily cause a fracture in the orbital or zygomaxillary complex, as well as a traumatic brain injury like a concussion or a brain contusion. Something tells me we'll encounter a whole lot of head trauma in today's class, and it would be useful to differentiate between the two. A contusion is another way to say bruise, and refers to the bleeding on the brain due to localized trauma. A concussion refers to more widespread brain trauma from a blow to the head or swift shaking. Clinicians will treat each injury differently, but a push from the Punisher that sends your occipital bone dinging like a bell off of a metal weight bar could leave you with both. Ding ding, dinner's done. Guys, dinner's ready. Dinner! Oh, hmm. dinner's ready. Why didn't you just tell us? Hopefully this doesn't crack his skull at the back. Then he falls face first onto the ground, which could also result in an injury on his frontal bone or the forehead, especially if said individual hits his head off of a weight carelessly left on the mat. Jeez, rack up your weights, people. Are you gonna put your weights back, bro? What do you want? Now, you don't have to be a trained clinician to see blunt force head trauma differs from, say, an eye gouge. Fortunately, Frank's thumb didn't seem to penetrate the eye socket at any real depth, and his attacker will keep his eye. His knee, on the other hand, suffers a more severe blow as Frank administers a heavy kick to the thigh that again aims to exploit the limitations of the hinge anatomy of the knee. Any activity that causes you to forcefully twist or rotate your knee, especially when you're putting your full weight on it, could lead to a torn meniscus, a C-shaped piece of tough rubbery cartilage, which acts as a shock absorber between the shin bone and the thigh bone, or an injury to the cruciate ligaments, a pair of crossed knee ligaments located within the center of the knee. Minor meniscus injuries can be treated with rest, ice, and medication, relieving the pain long enough to give the injury time to heal on its own. In other cases, however, a torn meniscus requires surgery. Unfortunately for this baddie, it doesn't look like he'll be getting any care at the moment. But before the Punisher can follow up, two more attackers are on top of him.
Again, with the knees. This time, Frank is holding a weight. Though his attack is aimed at the interior surface of the joint, the added weight behind his blow may have enough power to fracture the bone located there. The femur, above, and the tibia, below, meet to form the knee joint via their respective condyles, a term that refers to the rounded protuberance at the end of some bones, forming an articulation with another bone. Depending on where the blow connected, either the medial femoral condyle or the medial tibia plateau could have been damaged. And then, of course, Compared to the long bones of the leg, the intricate bone structure of the jaw and face stand no chance to the Punisher swinging a 20 pound steel weight. Nothing screams Frank Castle like solid metal, with little pointy edges swung full force. But we'll need to slow it down a bit to get a better sense of what's going on. It's safe to say this guy won't be walking normally the next day, and his face will show signs of being hit with blunt force to what appears to be the left upper quadrant of his face, potentially shattering many bones. Orbital, nasal, lacrimal, zygomaxillary complex. A real grab bag of damage which no one would ever ask for, but these guys, well, you might say they're asking for it just a little bit. A brutal metal enforced uppercut cracking him right in the mandible is likely no more fortuitous than the other blows to the head we've seen thus far. The force translates through the bones of the skull to jostle the brain. The mandible may be shattered on impact and Frank may have even caught him in the throat, potentially leading to an obstructed airway and compromised breathing. No surprise as our patient drops faster than last month's FTX stock. Even more blunt force trauma to the head, but this time Frank doesn't even seem to be looking. It's unlikely this guy is getting up. And then things go from bad, for the bad guys, to worse. Pro tip, if you're gonna throw a workout bench at Frank, you'd better not miss. Retribution will not be pleasant. Judging by the size of that kettlebell, I'm estimating 25 to 35 pounds. This is kettlebell and I like because I like to work out. Frank displays considerable strength as he quickly flings the ball of metal at his attacker's chest. I love kettlebells. You'll never see me without kettlebells nearby, so. At this speed and distance, and depending on the actual angle of impact, a 30 pound kettlebell could fracture a rib or the sternum, which is the long flat bone that forms the center of the chest wall attached to the collarbone and the first seven ribs. The majority of sternal fractures result from blunt trauma, and the most common location of the fracture is in the sternal manubrium, or the body. In many cases, there is an underlying organ injury as well. As you might expect, heart and lung contusion, or bruising, as well as rib fractures are not uncommon with sternal fractures. At the very least, the kettlebell will knock the wind out of him or in more precise medical terms, cause the diaphragm to spasm due to sudden force applied to the upper central region of the abdomen and solar plexus. And then Frank ups the ante yet again. This no look pass with a 45 pound Olympic barbell makes me wonder if Frank has eyes in the back of his head. There are so many potential TBIs happening here, it's hard to keep track. I'm a little tempted to throw together a quick blunt head trauma tier list and rank the fallen attackers in order of severity. Surely, given the speed at which the man in the blue is advancing and the speed and the weight of the bar, this would be at least B tier or higher. But I digress. Of all the attacks we've seen in this video, the powerful overhead swing with the barbell is one that must be dodged. Even Frank, with his superhuman durability, would have gone down to that. You'd think maybe Frank would be tired by now, needing some electrolytes, needing to assess his injuries thus far, but with his adrenaline pumping and fight reflex engaged, he drives a metal plate into his attackers. The blow to the bridge of the nose looks to have ruptured the blood vessels located there. A broken nose seems very likely as blood splatters out from his face like me trying to heat up pasta in the freaking microwave. Dinner is 
ready for you to eat. And it only took about... A less hardy man would have fallen then and there. You know, Frank, your love for the human knee makes me think you would have made an excellent orthopedic surgeon in another life. This attack appears to connect with the anterolateral aspect of the tibia, or the shin, forcing the knee to buckle inwards. This has torn MCL written all over it. This is the ligament on the medial, or inside aspect of the knee, that prevents the leg from extending too far inward. It is also part of the mechanism that stabilizes the knee and prevents rotation. Depending on severity, a partial MCL tear may be treated non-operatively with rest, medication, and physiotherapy to strengthen the surrounding tissues. It generally will not heal on its own, but it is possible for it to retain its function. If the ligament is completely torn, surgery is recommended, particularly if the patient has valgus or knock knee alignment. And it looks like someone isn't happy to have his comrades treated so impolitely. <laughs> Frank knows this is the final boss and takes a moment to collect himself before running directly at the man who outweighs him by a good 60 pounds. From here, things happen rather quickly. <laughs> Unimpressed with Frank's punches, the large man spits blood in his face as if to say, Go suck your mama. Suck your mama. I really hope he doesn't have any communicable diseases. You'd think this guy must be losing blood fast enough that it would slow him down. But based on his size, this man contains about six liters of blood and he'd have to lose a good two to three liters of that roughly before he passes out. Look out, Frank. <laughs> A heaping helping of headbutt bloodies Frank up some. Yeah. Now listen, that's called mother bars. Mumble rappers are finished. Over. Followed by a punch to Frank's face, drawing more blood. If anything is broken or fractured, no one seems to notice, which is impressive. Perhaps we're expected to believe that Frank has received so many blows to the body and face over his lifetime that his bones have hardened to some degree to respond to the stress placed upon them. I'm oversimplifying, but technically, that's how bones work. A regular human, if suplexed onto hardwood directly onto the square of their back, somewhere along the lower thoracic or lumbar spine, might suffer damage to the individual vertebrae located there. I can imagine some component of the posterior vertebral arch, the facet, lamina, or spinous process failing under such a forceful slam. Frank is shaken, but only a proper examination can tell us if anything is broken or displaced. <laughs> Looming over him, the larger aggressor has the swagger of a man who is ready to finish off someone he considers to be less than a worthy opponent. And with a bloody smile on his face, he begins feeding Frank punches. Enter the three o'clock high technique. This involves getting destroyed by a much larger opponent, only for them to be so intent on finishing the job that they fail to notice you get a hold of a secret weapon. In the case of three o'clock high, brass knuckles. See what I mean? In Frank's case, we have a small metal weight that he hooks onto his fingers, equating to a pair of brass knuckles. And he turns the tables <laughs> in an instant. We should mention that if Frank held the weight with the wrong grip, it could hurt his fingers worse than the person he's attacking. Similar to brass knuckles. I don't think brass knuckles are going through a skull without hurting your hand first. Yeah, especially holding them like that. Technique is key. Now. If you want to know how Hollywood depicts a man with multiple facial fractures and lacerations and a skull mangled and caved in beyond recognition, which yes, means guaranteed brain damage and one heck of a challenge for the plastic surgeon assigned to the case. Can someone wipe 
the sweat off my forehead. I will kindly refer you to the original video because you know, I don't want to get demonetized. This is something a doctor wouldn't normally see unless someone were in a serious car accident or cross paths with the Punisher. Of course, unless this man was rushed to the ER immediately, he would have little chance of surviving this attack. As for Frank, and I'm not your enemy. He's not the kind of guy to leave a job unfinished. What do I find? Try the hand on that, Doc. I'd suggest telling him what he wants to know. If you want to support the channel and the work of my team, then be sure to tip them by signing up as a member. If you like the video, then be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you didn't, be sure to let me know why in the comment section down below. Otherwise, as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho, where we see one, do one, and teach one.